was shaking, shaking, shaking straight out of surgery. This is painful, yo. It was, a, it was a whole tussle, you know what I'm saying? You really gonna just pull? You really gonna just tug? You can't just sit there nicely? That has been a struggle from day one to day now. It is life, it's gravity, we're getting older. It's just what it is. That almost took me out. That almost took me out. Girl, we need to talk. Okay, I am now four weeks post-op and there are so many reflections that I have thus far that I need to share with you. So this is if you are just in general curious about my journey or you are planning on doing this, have been researching this procedure, you just need to know these things, okay? If you don't already know, I do have a playlist on this whole series where I'm sharing with you my cosmetic procedure journey, okay? So I had an abdominoplasty done, 360 liposuction and mastopexy. What is abdominoplasty? Tummy tuck, mastopexy is breast lift, no implants, just the lift, okay? So again, playlist is in the description box below. You can watch the whole series and keep yourself up to date with what I want. But let's talk about what I wish I knew before surgery. Now, I do wanna say that none of this makes me think or feel that I never did the surgery. I certainly love that I did the surgery. I'm just saying that these are things that I did not know were gonna happen. That happened, and I'm just like, what? Okay, and there are a lot of videos that don't, to explain all of this and that is why this video is important for me to share in case you care or in case you are planning to do the surgery. All right. So like I said, I am four weeks in and I have not felt any better. I healed in my opinion very nicely. It is important that you understand that everyone is different and uh, I have a number one high pain tolerance and number two, I just have the favor of the Lord Jesus. And when I feel when you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you have his favor, a lot of things go a lot easier for you than it may go for someone else. So I honestly give God all the glory for how I have healed. And you'll see in the series, watch the playlist linked below, okay? I initially was going to get the tummy tuck and the 360 lipo because I knew that I wanted all around my abdomen to be slim, not just the front. I've seen videos and pictures where people just do tummy tuck and that was not what I wanted. I wanted everything to be smooth, back, sides, the whole nine yards. So hence why I got the 360 lipo. And while I was there, I was like, maybe I should also do my breast because that wasn't my initial problem area. I was tolerating my breast, so my main issue was my abdomen. And then I was like, while I'm here, why don't I just get all of it done? Because honestly, I wanted to just do a one and done situation. I didn't want to later on be all like, oh, I I wish I had done my breasts. You know, I wanted the whole shebang to look good. So I added on the breast, which increased the cost that I paid, duh. But I'm glad I just did it all at one time. And I say this because what I added on secondarily turns out to be my favorite part of the surgery. So although my abdomen was my issue and I added on the breast secondarily, my breasts are my most favorite part of the surgery. That was a shock to me because I love how my breasts look. And I'll insert a picture here with me clothes on, Avi, but I just love how my freaking breasts look. I no longer need breast tape. I no longer need a bra, but of course I am a more mature woman. Collagen in the skin and the elasticity of the skin is different. So obviously to protect my investment, I am to wear some kind of bra. I'm not gonna wear underwire. I'm gonna do more of the soft skims type bras. And honestly, I look forward to that, okay? But if I didn't want to, if there was a certain outfit that didn't require a bra, I feel so sexy and beautiful not having to wear one. And I am so glad to now no longer have that problem. If you are a mom and or you have saggy breasts because it's life, it is life, it's gravity, we're getting older, it's just what it is, then you understand what I'm talking about. And if you have perky breasts, whether you have not got it cosmetically altered or you just have them, honey, then you know the benefit, you know how it feels to just be able to have a choice on whether or not you're gonna wear a bra today. So I just love that I got that reset, all right? I did not expect to have such a dry freaking mouth. I don't recall being, and this is not like a, a shade to the hospital, it's just stuff that I, I ended up learning. I did not realize that that I would have such a dry freaking mouth to a point where it was so uncomfortable for my mouth to feel like paper. Even when my mom was like, eat something. And I, I asked her to get me my keto bread and put, what did she put on it? Butter, I think she put on it. It was so hard to eat that. And then the crumbs got down in my shirt and I was like, oh my God, I should have I should have put something down. Cause I'm like, I just got my breast done and I got crumbs down my shirt. It was just a mess. But I'm like, yo, my mouth is so dry. And that, that stayed there for yeah, maybe two days. I can't remember, but I was like, what? It it was so uncomfortable. And I was shaking, shaking, shaking straight out of surgery. Now that I knew was gonna happen, but you don't know until you get there. You don't know until it's happening to you that uh, this is uncomfortable. When is it gonna stop? Can you make it stop? And I recall being like, why am I shaking like this? Oh, it's the anesthesia wearing off. And I'm like, 
I'm okay, so whoa, whoa, whoa. is it gonna stop? I'm cold. And they're like, you know, I had my sweater on. They put, I don't know what they put on me. I can't think, but I have my uh, my sweater on. They have fleece underneath it. And I'm like, can you hold my legs down? And the nurse held my legs. I'm like, can you just hold my legs still? Because my legs were shaking. Ah! And I like to be in control of myself, you know? And not being able to do that was so difficult for me. And maybe it stopped a few hours later. But yeah, I was just like, excuse me? Like, you ain't trying to go away? That was a shocker. The medicine, when the nurse called me the night before to recap on the instructions and stuff, she did say that I could bring my hydrocodone and should if I wanted to, so I made sure that was in my purse. Now, I've had a C-section, so I am no stranger to pain, but yo. <laughs> when I woke up, I was like, wow, this is the pain? They were like, yeah! And I was like, this is the, the pain? This is it? <laughs> Did you give me the code on yet? <laughs> so they got it in my purse and they gave it to me and I was like, this is gonna go down? <laughs> yo, straight out the gate, I was like, wow, this is painful, yo. Now, my six might be your 15. My six might be your 12. You feel what I'm saying? That was some painful stuff. I'm trying to tell you something. I was like, <laughs> so how far is a cold on going to help me? Because this is serious. Now, I had already prepped my mind for intense pain, but I was so eager to find out how intense it was going to be. That was part of why I just wanted to get this surgery over with because I just wanted to know, like, what is it going to be like? When I woke up, I was like, okay, it's game time. We got this, okay? I never shed a tear through the whole process. Again, I have a high pain tolerance, but I will not lie to you. That ish was freaking painful. The medicine kept me out like a five, six. Okay. I did not feel like a one or two mm -mm, for several days, you know? And even when I stopped the medication several days later, cause I just didn't want to be on medication. I didn't know if I was groggy cause I had surgery. If I was groggy cause I had medicine. I didn't like it. I'm fine with medicine. I just didn't want to be on such heavy medication. There was a muscle relaxer and the hydrocodone. So every three hours I was taking one of those. And so I would do that. But I would say that I stopped the medication perhaps on day five, four, four or five. Another thing too is that Yes, it took me a few days to pass a stool, okay? I did take Miralax once and it helped and it wasn't too painful, but of course the idea of contracting my abs to do anything was very painful. You can imagine, right? To laugh, to cough. God forbid you got a cough, okay? Because wow. But like I said, to pass a stool, that was like a challenge, but it did come out and it was fine. But then I had eaten something and I don't know what it was that triggered it. It could have been the fact that I just, I had spinach stew. So I have a mom's spinach stew. And maybe what it was is it just loosened me all up because it's veggies, it's spinach. Honey, I had gotten severe diarrhea one day during the first few days. When I cramp up, when I gotta go to the number two, it hurts badly. You know, there's some people who can take diet test tea or whatever, but I mean the tea and then they're like, oh, that was like, help me. No, no, no. For me, I feel like I'm almost maybe passing a kidney stone. I don't even know what that feels like, but it, it's just excruciating bad. Okay, imagine being a few days post-op and then having that feeling of the excruciating, twisting, 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 cause you gotta go to the bathroom. Ah, that twisting, in addition to being post-op and having the pain, and we're getting deep because if you want to know, you want to know. You got to know these things. Well, normally when I have that pain, what I do is I push my stomach in because I'm trying to push my stomach to alleviate the pain. And imagine, I can't push my stomach in because I'm like three days post-op. Jai, mm -mm. The pain, the pain, the pain, the pain. Wow, that was terrible. But I made my way to the bathroom and thank the Lord Jesus it came out and I, you know, ah. Oh. That almost took me out. That almost took me out. I had no clue that part of the anesthesia was gonna be a throat. What do, how do you call it? A, a throat, a throat thing, a throat tube. Honey, I had a tube in my throat, I had no clue. So when I got up, I also had a sore throat. It felt like a, an intense sore throat. So I would, of course I would clear it like, <clears throat> and even that was like contracting my abs. But then I felt like there was phlegm in my throat that just needed to come out. And that was difficult to even get it out because just to go like, <laughs> <laughs> was hard. So there were times where I was like, let me just leave the phlegm there. Let me just leave it. So I talked too much. I felt like the phlegm was just trying to get out. Jai, 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 Jai. Hey, the pain, the pain, the pain was trying to kill me. It was freaking painful. And days later, I was able to really get the cough out. So yeah, I had no idea that in, in addition to the IV in my hand, which did bruise, which is normal, I was going to have the thing down my throat. And then I had my period a few days later. Girl, I did not look at my calendar when I when I made the appointment. So I, it didn't dawn on me that my period would be during the first few days of being post-op. Jai, 
Thank God I wear tampons. I don't do any of the other stuff. So I just put a tampon in the day that I knew would come and then I checked it later and I had my period, right? Fine. But imagine the post-op pain plus your period pain. Now, thankfully my period pain is not too much, but it was still something to be noticed. And I'm like, okay, I'm getting some cramping. Is this the post-op operation or is this the menstruation? What a guan, you know? It was just a problem for me. And I'm like, hey, God of mercy, why? If my period is just a few days, three or four days and I'm Gucci. So praise Jehovah. If you have this procedure and your period is like seven days oh, wow i mean and it's like and you and you cramp badly schedule this without the period you don't want to tussle with the post-op pain and then the period pain you know we know what's what like you're not gonna know what is what the problem is you feel me again back to the garment in some cases the garment was yoking it up you know the garment was yoking up the whole vulva situation you feel me and it was a, it was a whole tussle you know what i'm saying and it's like yo like you 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 really gonna just yoke you you really gonna just pull you really gonna just tug you can't just sit there nicely why is the Volvo wedgie in? You feel what I'm saying? Like, what is going on? Really and truly, me besides Sam, why is this happening to me? That has been a struggle from day one to day now. Me conscious though. It has been a struggle. And I don't know if this is everyone's struggle, but it definitely was my struggle. You know, I've got two garments and I've gotten both of them taken in on the sides, two inches a piece. The first is the double XL, then the other is the XL. I've gotten both of them taken in because I didn't have a BBL, so I didn't need to take the whole thing in. The shorts part is fine, although it's tight, but it was the waist that had to be taken in, right? But both of them be like yoking this, they be yoking up the girl, you feel me? And that is very uncomfortable. Now, I do not wear panties. I have not worn panties for three years. It's just my choice. I just like to go like that. So, you know, it's a little colorful when you think about Garment, no panties, discharge. You feel me? Because discharge is normal. You know what I'm saying? Ovulation, just because, you know, like the sun is out, we're going to discharge. You feel me? And it's like, wow, hi, a lot of things happening down there. So that has been very colorful. Uh, praise God, I have two different garments and I wash and just, I, I, I recycle them. You feel me? Because that's the problem. But now in the beginning with the, the lack of showering schedule being consistent, it's a little bit touch and go, you know, but this is certain and you gotta just roll with the punches. You feel me? You gotta just go with it. It's 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 been quite an adventure. The massages, oh my God. So I had massages every day for the first two weeks, except the second day, day two, because I didn't know if I should go or not. But then after that, I had massages every single day. The massages are freaking painful. They sometimes got a little bit better, but even now they pick back up again because she's now doing wood therapy. And it's like, excuse me, what the hell? But uh, it has been like this. That stuff be real painful, you feel me? But my doctor even said like, you look really good, I can tell you're getting massages and I can see it. I feel very, very happy. Very, very happy with my results. I don't regret this one bit. The main pain is my liposuction. It's not the tummy tuck. It might be because the lipo, the tummy tuck area is still numb. I don't know. And the doctor said, yeah, the main issue is the lipo. The skin is so tender. So sometimes the massages are wicked painful, especially in the beginning of my gut today. Mm -hmm. And then they got to a point where I could actually close my eyes and relax. I almost snored one time and now it has to rev back up again. <laughs> so that's something to think about. You feel me? And then even the cost, you know, even the cost of that, the extra garment was a two, was 250 because the first garment was included in the first quote because I got out of the surgery room with a garment on and then, you know, the foams and whatever, all that stuff is added. You gotta also think about the added cost of this. So it's more than just what you pay for the doctor, it's everything else. And then the treatment that I'm on right now for the scar treatment, I got from her because she can't guarantee the results unless you use her stuff. Now you might think like, oh, come on, that's how they, you know, maybe, you know, maybe it's smart. But then also too, I don't want to go try something from Amazon or from whatever other company and then come back to her in six months and be like, yo, look at my incision. You feel me? So, you know, there's stuff like that. And if you have any questions about this stuff, leave them below. Okay. Speaking of massages, I had built up some inflammation in my armpit. This one, this one too, but it didn't stay this one. So it felt like there was a ball in there. And of course she can't feel anything, honey. She uses a lot of pressure, which is needed, but wow. So she would massage the armpit. She still does. And it doesn't hurt as much anymore. She would massage and sometimes she would be pinching it because you got to get that ball down, baby. It's just inflammation. Pinching it, maneuvering it. My God, today, when I tell you pain, Jay, mm -mm. the pain was something else and it has worked. It has worked, but not without pain. Mm -mm. Oh, wow. I can't even, I hope that I'm being very clear. Oh, wow. Okay. Because the, the lipo I said, it did include my armpits because I wanted her to get back here and right here. And I guess she like did the whole armpit. I mean, I don't know, but it, it looks really good. It's just that joint freaking hurt. I did not expect the tingling of the breasts as the nerves 
started to come back to life. And it's not the nipple, it's the areola. And when I tell you it's so uncomfortable, it is so uncomfortable. It has been so intense sometimes. It's like, excuse me, what's happening here? It just feels like a tingling, an intense tingling. And so what I'll do is literally press. I'll just press. Like I'm hoping that by pressing, it'll just like calm it down because the nipple and the areola does get, it gets cut and paste from one place to the other, honey. And it just be like, wow. And even too in the shower, because you, you will lose sensation and then it, it, it gradually comes back. So um, in the shower, when I'm standing in front of it and the water comes down for a while, it was so uncomfortable because my left nipple did have a lot of sensation and it was just uncomfortable because it was like sore. So I would need to turn because then the right nipple had a little bit of sensation, but nothing like my left. That was definitely like a, oh, this is uncomfortable. I don't like this, stop. The garment is annoying. Okay, let's just call it what it is. It is very tight. Like I said, it got the vulva wedgie going on. You feel me? And then even the, the thigh with the rubber, it's digging in. I'm used to it now, we're at a month. I have loosened up this part because it was annoying how tight it was and leaving a mark and stuff. So it began wicked tight when I had gotten to take it in. And then after a few days, it feels loose again because it's compressing my tummy and then I need to get it tighter again. It's like, what? So even the binder, I went down a size and like, this is tight. It's not tight where it's painful. It's just freaking tight. You know. Know, I, I want to do everything that will give me the best results ever. I'm committed to that. I don't care. But is it irritating? Yeah. I mean, let's just call it what it is. It's freaking irritating. Yo, the low salt diet? Get out of here. I'm still doing keto. Okay. Still doing keto. Hence why I've lost weight in addition to the freaking low salt diet. So imagine keto, low salt. You're not even eating. Like what? There are some days where I'll just have boiled egg and like some nuggets or something like that. Even the nuggets, I'm like, I know this is kind of, you know, you got salt in it. But I like, I just be eating something. I've been eating something. Okay. And of course, the first several days days or several weeks, I was really swollen, compression socks, all the things, and it has gotten better. Sometimes I'll still feel my hands swollen. And my understanding is that even through the year, I'll have intermittent sw swelling. So I expect that. But show the low salt diet, definitely I've lost weight. If you look at my vlogs and you see my face even, or much my body from but like even December 1st or just through the vlogs. And then now I've lost weight and I'm so happy because I still want to lose weight. I still want to get fit. I cannot wait to get back in the gym and work out and just tone. I'm coming for these gains, okay? The diet is not easy. I will not say that I've done a stupendous job with the low salt. I just won't say that. I did the best that I could. And even the diet after the two, the drains, forget about it. Minimal water intake plus, the, and I think she even said no salt. I was like, I was like, what? Oh my God. There were certain days I was thirsty, Ancasa, thirsty. And usually I'm fighting to get enough water in a day. And now that I can't have it, I'm like, wow, really? So that was a huge shocker. I mean, there like, there are sacrifices to this, okay? Now, let's talk about the drains because the drains are a whole nother animal. Watch the vlogs, first of all. Watch the series, the episodes to see what is going on, but uh, the drains were a shocker. I mean, I haven't seen every video on YouTube, but I don't know if folks are really showing y'all how this goes down. And that's why in my journey in the episodes, I wanted to show you because it's important like we need to know what's I want. I mean, the, the nurses, yes, they showed me how to do it, but like, you know, you ain't really in it until you in it. You ain't in it until you in it. And I was like, wow. And even shower with a drain, how they explained that like, the drain essentially needs to be out of the way, but up. So some people will put like something around their neck and then hang the drain from the neck. And I'm like, mm, I want to shower with my neck. So I would hang the drain on my head tie. Come see me pinning a drain to my head tie, the, the blood all in the drain. The thing is coming from here to here. So as I'm showering, I'm trying not to hit the the tubes so I can shower and hey, Jesus, that was something. I had the drains in for two weeks and I might have showered like five times and it was just like something else. It was something every time. To be honest, I was so eager to get those drains out because I just wanted to be more free. And now I'm so eager to get this 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 stage one garment off so I can be another level of free. You feel me? It's like every level you're more and more free. I just cannot wait. Another thing that was so hard to figure out was what to wear because of the foam and the garment. It's just giving very, you can't see it, but you know, like, so I, I usually wear baggy stuff because it's just easier that way. Fitted stuff just looks, I, I'm not even in that realm. And then I have the full one on so you can see the indent of the legs of the shorts of the garment. And I don't like how that looks when you have on gym pants or anything fitted. So I've been wearing the same few things, just washing and wearing them, these loose pants and stuff. So it's been quite a thing to figure out what to wear over the past month. I can't lie to you. It's like, wow. I mean, 
I had these comfortable sweaters that I was wearing, but that was starting to get on my nerves. I was tired of wearing that. And it's just like, dang, I wanna wear something else. Yeah, that's a whole thing. So I cannot imagine doing this in the summertime because it's hot and you need to wear something that's gonna give you some breeze. And I can't, Im I, I just wouldn't even know how, I don't know how people do it, but obviously you gotta figure out a way. I'm just glad that I'm past that point. I mean, well, not really, but almost. I'm glad that I'm almost past that point because, yo, that's annoying. Part of my 360 lipo in the tummy tuck was having the Mons lipo. What are Mons? M-O-N-S. Google it and you'll see. That area was still, I mean, really, they're swelling all over. Even my hips are still swollen. So the Mons, it has been going down, but it's still swollen. I can't lie. In the beginning, part of me was like, did she did she lipo this? She said she would. Like, it's on my documentation. Did you lipo this or not? Because I was like, why are we looking like this, you know? But over the time, even with the massages, it has gone down. I'm like, oh, praise the Lord Jesus. Because I was like, is, is there something wrong? Like, do I need to go back in for the Mons? I don't want to do this again. Like, can you just, can I get some, some reassurance here? It's going down little by little. It's even a little lopsided, but anyway, listen, it's life. I'm still healing. It is going down. I'm so grateful because now if I wear something really, really fitted, it ain't gonna be giving fupa. You feel what I'm saying? Because that's really the fupa area. The fupa is the mons area. And some of us have extra areas in the mons areas. When you got a flat tummy and you got that fupa and you wear something real fitted, it's just, it's gonna show. You feel me? It's gonna be giving camel toe. And I just don't want that. Like, it needs to all be uniform. You feel me? When I turn to the side, it needs to all go down. You feel what I'm saying? There's a difference. Those who get it, get it. If you get what I'm saying, comment and let me know. I'm just saying, I've always had a hoopa. You feel me? Now, the last thing is that my tummy, more in the middle, mid to lower area, still feels hard. Okay, and that's why even today at today's therapy, she was doing the wood therapy because she said that that's going to help that. And I'm like, okay, good. This is a good thing. It still feels hard. And I'm like, I'm, I'm doing the right things. I am I got my garment on 23 hours a day. I'm doing the, the massages way more than I'm sure a lot of people do. And I'm, I trust that with the wood therapy that she just started, that's gonna loosen up all that hardness. But I can't lie, I'm like, this is gonna go away. <laughs> I don't wanna be hard. I don't wanna look like a board. I mean, I have on a board, but I don't wanna look like I have an internal board, you feel me? So anyway, those are all the things that I have learned now that I, through the process, that I wish I knew beforehand. Perhaps none of this would have surprised me, but a lot of it has surprised me. If you have had the procedure, have any reflections, feedback, questions, comment and let me know. Give the video a thumbs up. Watch the series in the playlist, which is in the description box down below. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.